In this video, brought to you by Uncle Adam's favorite brushes, a new brush set from Monument Hobbies, more at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how to save money in wargaming by not playing Warhammer. As I said in last week's video, the kind of joke that I put in there was that the best way to save money in playing Warhammer is to, you know, not play Warhammer, her, 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 her the comments and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, many of you actually did type that comment directly in. So, you know, there you go. I also said in last week's video that I was going to make another video about how to save money in Wargaming by not playing Warhammer. And, um, well, here we are. Many of the points that I made in last week's video will also work in this week's video. If you didn't see last week's, pachow. Uh, plan your paint jobs so you're not wasting paint. Figure those things out ahead of time. Uh, you, you can you, Synthetic brushes, especially inexpensive synthetic brushes, are a great way to start getting into painting and that kind of stuff. Um, basic materials. Don't buy them, you know, really. You can go out into your yard or the park or into the street or whatever, and uh, possibly even things in your own kitchen, and they'll work just fine. These things are different than last week's video, but the things I mentioned like that last week still also apply to um, when you're not playing Warhammer. Also, an important caveat, Warhammer is the most popular tabletop war game out there. It, you know, 40K, Age of Sigmar, Kill Team, Warcry, Necromunda, the flying around game, all that kind of stuff. All of those are more popular than everything else put together, honestly, out there in the wargaming world. So it will, and I've mentioned this many times before, be an uphill battle sometimes for you to try to get your uh, friends or your people in your local group to start trying to play something else. Warhammer is what most people know, but there are lots of other things out there. And if you're interested in that, then Hopefully this video will help, and then maybe you'll be able to convince somebody if they're interested in going down that road as well. Many people, frankly, in my opinion, stick to games like Warhammer because it's all they know. When I start talking about games sometimes, indie stuff that I'm interested in, I get a lot of comments and videos from people who are like, where do you even find this stuff? How did you know about that? That sounds really cool. And so, yeah, one of the reasons we're doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the rules. Rule sets are important. I know there are plenty of folks out there that are like, really, the miniatures are the most important part. I don't care about the rules so much, just as long as the miniatures are cool. There are a lot of cool miniatures out there, but I personally believe that if you have a good time actually playing the rule set, you will want to play more. And playing more gets you to build and paint more and all that kind of stuff and stay engaged in the hobby. There are folks out there who just build and paint and never play, and that's fine. But... Even I, who paint and build far more than I actually play, just because of the amount of time it takes to, you know, build and paint a bunch of stuff versus play a game that maybe takes an hour, I still really, really like a good set of rules. One of the most important things, I think, for saving money are to find yourself small indie games that are miniature agnostic. I've talked about miniature agnostic games several times before here on the channel. These are games that are just a rule set, but you can use whatever miniatures you want. It, Again, you can use whatever miniatures you want in whatever game you want at any time. That being said, some rule sets, they're like, hey, look, we have all these miniatures that you can buy. Not just Warhammer, but stuff like Malifaux and, uh, you know, Kings of War and all kinds of other games. They'll also, you, you can play whatever you want in those as well, but they have stuff that you can just buy. Then there are rule sets out there that are usually more indie that don't have any kind of affiliated line of miniatures. So you have to kind of come up with it yourself. To some people, that's a downside. They're like, geez, now I got to go out and try to find miniatures for this stuff. I just want to go grab stuff off the shelf. But for a lot of people, um, you know, they enjoy the, I don't even want to say challenge. They would enjoy the activity of getting to figure out what kind of miniatures. And also very frequently, it's a whole bunch cheaper. The other big benefit to miniatures agnostic games is I can make a bunch of sci-fi guys that I can use in multiple games. It's not so much like, I bought these guys, they are designed for this game, they'll look a little silly in any other game. When you play miniature agnostic stuff and find the right rules, I can play three or four different science fiction games that I can think of off the top of my head with miniatures that I've already got. Uh, five Parsecs from Home, Stargrave, Planet 28, uh, Space Weirdos. Those are just off the top of my head. And it's just one set of miniatures. So, Uncle Adam, where do you go to get all these mythical indie 
uh, tabletop wargaming rule sets and skirmish and the, the miniature agnostic and all. Uh, I, I'm glad you asked. Actually, uh, um, wargamevault.com. Wargamevault.com is the place that I like to go to download uh, a lot of different types of games: uh, fantasy, uh, sci-fi, army style, uh, miniature, um, all kinds of different things. Um, also, add-ons and expansions and all kinds of stuff. It's a website that you can, I'll put it in the description, um, you can download PDFs. They also sell uh, hard copy, physical, like print-on-demand versions. you got to pay shipping extra and stuff like that, obviously, depending on where you are. But they have facilities in the U.S. and the U.K. This is not an ad or anything. It's just a place that I like to go to, and, and, and I've purchased a bunch of things. I will be fair and say that um, the website's not necessarily the newest in technology, so it's a little kludgy here and there. And also... Um, not every single title on there is available as print on demand. Actually, um, I would say the majority aren't, but either you can print them yourself if you're into that kind of thing, or if you're like me, you can just keep them on your iPad and have access to whole bunches of different rule sets all in one place. It's a good place to take a look. Uh, if you've got other places that you like to go online and take a look at for uh, miniatures agnostic or indie art, you know, any of that kind of stuff, uh, put it in the comments below, please. Um, if you're interested in checking out also different types of maybe slightly more popular indie games and you'd also like to know a little bit about how they're played, I'd tell you to go over and uh, make a visit over to our friend Ash over at Gorilla Miniature Games. Um, and I'll put Chow and put a thing up there. I think that should probably work. I think I can send people to other people's channels with that uh, functionality. Uh, Gorilla Miniature Games is a YouTube channel run by Ash Barker and he go, delves into a lot of different indie style games and does bat reps so you can uh, even get a taste for what the game's like before you start, you know, actually pulling the trigger and downloading PDFs and, you know, getting things printed upon demand and such. Here's a hot take. I think that eBay, though it's great for Warhammer, is actually a little bit harder to use when you are trying to play something that's a little bit more indie. Um, when you want to, like look up some, I don't know, Dark Eldar. You can type in Dark Eldar and you will get uh, the database to go run through and look for all the Dark Eldar, and then it will show you the Dark Eldar. It's kind of the way that computers and stuff work. When you are not quite sure what you're looking for in miniatures, just typing in miniatures or indie miniatures or sci-fi miniatures is going to get you a much bigger shotgun blast of information than you may have necessarily been looking for. Warhammer is very specific. It's a very specific keyword, as are many of the other types of games out there. If you're looking to buy Infinity models, you can type in Infinity Miniature. Although Infinity itself, as a word, Warhammer is Warhammer. Infinity is a word you can find in the dictionary, and it means a lot of different things. Um, Malifaux is a word that's very specific. So you kind of have back and forth. But when you don't particularly have a title in mind, you're just looking for sci-fi miniatures, eBay will eventually show you those things, but it might take a little bit more work on your part. Definitely a lot of more delving through all of the um, data. And I know you've been waiting for me to say it, and here it comes, 3D printing. Now, there is a, a misconception that I'm against 3D printing uh, here, it seems, on the internet to some degree, and I'm not. Um, I initially made a video years ago. People keep saying it and going, hey, all this information is wrong about 3D printing. They got this now and this now and this now. And they don't look at the date on that video. That video is from three, four years ago. And, you know, technology these days, especially in the world of 3D printing, moves pretty fast. Um, spoiler alert, I own a 3D printer now. That video I made about how, like, I don't want to get into resin printing because it's this and this. A lot of those things have been mitigated. Not all, but a lot of those things have been mitigated. So I own a 3D printer. I have not yet set it up yet because, well, frankly, I have three jobs. And, uh, and, and I'm also trying to figure out how to vent. If it was just setting it up, that'd be one thing. But I got to figure out how to ventilate. And it's a whole thing. But it will happen. And I've also been painting a lot of 3D printed stuff. If I can't print it because I don't have my printer set up, then I've been uh, going and uh, I've got a couple of different friends that can print it um, and that kind of stuff. Where do you get a bunch of really cool STLs? Again, not an ad, but my favorite place to go is to myminifactory.com. You can just go in there. When I was originally uh, coming up with a bunch of demons for the game that Vince and I worked on, uh, I just went into uh, my mini factory and typed in demons and then 
Again, fire hose, tons and tons and tons of amazing looking models. You buy the little STL, you download it, and then you go talk to a friend of yours and you maybe give them some money to get you to print some things. Or another option is Etsy. Very frequently, if you can find a model, let's say you find a model on my mini factory. One thing that you might think about doing if you have no interest of ever printing it yourself is take that keyword, whatever that model might be called, and search for it on Etsy. There may be somebody on Etsy who's already printing that model and just has a bunch of them and just sells them and just keeps printing them in that way. They have generally a license to do so as well, but that's another good way to find really specific, interesting minis. Now, if you can't find anyone on Etsy who is printing this specific STL that you found on whether it's my mini factory or through some other sculptor's Patreon, there's a lot of different places, and I've talked about those things in the past. Very frequently, you'll find people on Etsy who will just print 3D stuff for you. You can go, hey, I have this STL, and uh, it, how much does it cost for you to print those things? And there's lots of people on Etsy who are doing that. They are also, you know, putting out all kinds of things that they have the license to print, but they also very frequently, if you reach out to them, you say, hey, will you print other stuff and whatnot? And they'll be like, yeah, of course. And then you send them the STL, and then they print it, and they mail it back to you, and you pay for it and everything and all that kind of stuff. And uh, boom, it's like you've got a 3D printer. It just takes a lot longer, but it's uh, less uh, messing around, I guess. So there are tons, specifically within the last two years, there are tons and tons and tons now of different companies out there making um, STLs for every other different kind of niche and subgenre within all of Wargaming. We are spoilt for choice. Uh, and uh, so definitely take a look at that because that is these days, specifically if you're looking at more skirmish games, 3D printing an entire full big army game you can do it, certainly, but it's hard to get somebody else to do it for you. But if you're like, can you print these eight miniatures very frequently if they're normal 28 millimeter size, they might fit all in a single print bed and it's like one print job and then boom, there you go. So take a look into that because there are plenty of companies out there, obviously, that are making you know miniatures agnostic style stuff. There are companies out there that are making miniatures that can be used in all kinds of different games. Hard plastic, uh, resin, metal even still, and that's great. But you can also look into 3D printing, and that will just enlarge your scope. I want to say tenfold, but I'm sure it's much larger. And of course, there's terrain as well. Obviously, scratch building is very probably the cheapest, but if you either have a 3D printer, more the plastic filament kind versus the resin kind, or if, again, you have a friend with one, there are plenty of companies out there making great files that you can then turn into really amazing uh, pieces of terrain that you can print in that filament stuff and uh, and come up with all kinds of amazing stuff for your table. More variety than you could probably find from any other company. Then, of course, there's also MDF. Uh, the MDF terrain industry within our little niche industry keeps growing year after year. You basically need uh, MDF, you need some ideas, and you need a laser cutter, and then the ability to ship things. And that's pretty much about it. And there are lots and lots of companies out there. Some do stuff that you look at and go, wow, that's MDF. But some do stuff that you look at and you're like, that's amazing. So, you know, you, you want to obviously take a look around and look at a lot of pictures and things like that on these websites. But MDF is amazing and very easy to ship. It's heavy, but flat. So you just got that going. It's easy to build, in my opinion. Um, you just I talked about how to do MDF terrain a number of years ago. You might want to check that out. But ciao. And it's great. Plus, there's also companies out there making resin terrain. Like they're making it, molding it, and then pouring it and stuff like that. And then you put those pieces together. Or sometimes it's just one chunk or whatever. You know, scatter terrain, that kind of stuff. There are a lot of options out there. You don't need to work with the biggest companies. You can do a lot of cool indie stuff out there. It is much easier to be an indie uh, company out there now. It's way easier to get your indie game out there to people globally via PDF and print on demand. Uh, if you're a sculptor, it is so much easier for people to get your sculpts in their hands to play their games with through My Mini Factory, uh, you know, uh, Etsy, um, Patreon, all that kind of stuff. It, it, we are, again, like I said, I know a lot of people think, well, Warhammer, that's the entire industry. And it's not. It's easily most of the industry. It's the biggest. But when you take what's left, it is cut up into so many little pieces. You have so many options. If you're just like, I don't really like this from you know GW and I don't really like this from GW, you have options and you can get them cheaply and you can have a lot of fun with them. And this is the best way, in my opinion, to get into Wargaming as long as you're looking to save money. It's far cheaper to get into indie wargaming and 3D print stuff and PDFs and all this kind of stuff than it is to get into the big games. It is 
a little bit more difficult sometimes to find people to play with, but a little bit extra work, a little bit of elbow grease on your end, you can save yourself a bunch of money and have a good time.